Hi everyone, welcome back to Dr. Han's Pharmacy Classroom. If this is your first time here, I'm Dr. Han and I teach full-time in a U.S. pharmacy school. This week, let's look at some of the updated information on what we know about COVID-19 vaccine in immunocompromised patients. Here in the United States, about 3% of people is immunocompromised, and immunocompromised patients can be broken down into two major groups of people, the first group being HIV or AIDS patients and people with inherited immunodeficiency disease. These patients have a weakened immune system because of HIV infections or suffer from a genetic condition. The second group of people are those that are taking immunosuppressant or immune-modifying drugs for various reasons such as receiving organ transplants and those with autoimmune diseases. When the mRNA vaccine was first authorized back in December, we knew that there were 176 participants in the Moderna Phase 3 trial had HIV and AIDS, and 90 in the vaccine group and 86 in the placebo groups, but the trial excluded all people that were taking immunosuppressant drugs. With this small number of sample size, there were only one person in the placebo group contracted COVID-19. This small sample size was not enough to make any solid conclusion. Since vaccines work by stimulating people's adaptive immune system and to mimic a natural infection, it is reasonable to believe immunocompromised patients will respond differently than the general population. So let's look at some of the latest study on how safe and effective mRNA vaccines are in immunocompromised patients. Let's look at the safety data first. The good news is that the mRNA vaccines are generally safe in immunocompromised patients. In a study that included 950 solid organ transplant patients, 942 of them received the Pfizer mRNA vaccine and 8 received the Moderna mRNA vaccines. And only one liver transplant patient reported developing a prickling sensation in one of their legs. There were no serious adverse events reported in the study. I know we could always argue about the safety data being only limited to four weeks after the second dose, and I know many people will criticize the long-term safety data, and we should. But please also understand the mRNA vaccines are not designed to last in the body for more than two weeks. Now, if you want to know more about mRNA vaccine distribution, uh, things on spike protein, please check out my recent videos, and I have those links in the description box down below and also above and you can learn more about this topic. Now let's look at the effectiveness. The bad news is that the mRNA vaccine does not work well in some immunocompromised patients and it is highly dependent on the type of the disease. At least three studies look at how common medications used to treat autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis impact antibody developments in the patients. In combination, all three studies showed a significant reduction but detectable level of antibody production in patients with autoimmune disease who are taking drugs such as genus kinase inhibitor, steroids, and methotrexate. This result was not surprising because these drugs are designed to decrease the adaptive immune response. No serious adverse events were reported in these studies. As for solid organ transplant patients, overall only about a third of the followed up patients had developed anti-spike protein antibodies, and liver transplant patients had the highest number, about 50% of them had detectable level of antibodies four weeks after the second dose, but it was much lower in thoracic organs and pancreas organ transplant patients. Similar studies were also done in dialysis patients and with both solid and blood cancer patients, and all of these studies showed a suboptimum result of antibody production in these patients. And there are many questions remaining to be answered. 
First, we don't know the exact reason for much lowered vaccine immunogenicity in immunocompromised patients. And second, the studies so far are mostly focused on mRNA vaccines, probably because they are the most effective in the general population. But with the appearance of variants that are more infectious, it further complicates the situation for these patients. And third, we have no information on how other types of vaccines, such as adenoviral vector or some of the protein-based and even China-made inactivated vaccine, work in these group of patients. The bottom line is that with a death rate as high as 20% in COVID patients with solid organ transplants, these patients, friends, and families need to be very careful and need to behave like they aren't vaccinated and remain masked at all times. And lastly, this video is for educational purpose only, and I do not have any conflict of interest. Well, that's all for this week, and I'll see you again next week. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.